Listen to Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X. Wherever there is mystery, adventure, intrigue, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. ancient truck lurches slowly along a rough, muddy road somewhere in the jungles of Malaya. The driver keeps glancing warily at the masses of steaming vegetation on either side. And perhaps that is why he doesn't notice the rounded bit of brass buried in the road ahead. Hello, Chief. Well, Ken, you still in Shanghai? That's right. Good. Better catch the next plane out of there for the Philippines. We're all ready to crack down on that black market ring. Sorry, Chief. I'm going to Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur? Well, for heaven's sake, why, Ken? Padang Nipa is dead. How'd it happen? A cholera epidemic? No, a landmine. Murder? Sure. Well, I suppose they got two birds with one stone. Blow up a truckload of medical supplies at the same time. That's eh? right. Ken, there hasn't been enough medicine getting through to the villages in the cholera belt to handle 10% of the cases. And Padang was the only man who could get that through. You'd think those gorillas would want to help their people instead of blowing up and hijacking their medicines. Not when they need that epidemic for propaganda purposes. Not when they can accuse the British and the Americans of using biological warfare against them. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do about it? Try to stop them. Alone? Got any other ideas, Chief? Let me know how you come out. Welcome to Kuala Lumpur. Hello, Pagan. Pretty small world, eh, Mr. X? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Bet you're plenty surprised to find me here, all right, huh? Why should I be? I sent you a wire to meet me here. You did? Hey, hey, <laughs> that's right, you did. Yeah. What have you found out for me? Well, uh... Don't look now, Mr. X. But look over there and you'll see a taxi cab. Tell the driver Pagan sent you. Then what? He'll take you to a joker who can give you all the information you want about who is stealing medicine and how and stuff. <laughs> For a slight consideration, of course. Okay, I'll try it. Hmm? Meet me at the Baru Hotel in two hours. <laughs> you bet, Mr. Thurston. I'll be there, Jiminy, on the spot. Yeah. You uh, wish another one taxi, Mr. Yes? Yeah? That depends. On whether you know where to take me. Oh, Chen Yong, no, all Kuala Lumpur. He take on about Mr. Anywhere. Oh, where you wish to go? Suppose I leave that up to you. To Chen Yong? That's Pagan's suggestion. Ah, ah, so, so. Honorable Mr. Zell Smith, oh, yes, yes. Well, Chen Yong take Mr. where he wish to go, yes. Uh, please allow Chen Yong to assist you, Mr. Hey! Oh, oh. <laughs> sound, it'll be your last, understand? Yes, I, uh... Okay. Now, who are you? I, I am John Nipper, Mr. Thurston. John Nipper? Padang's son? Yes, uh, that is right. What are you doing aboard this sampan? Your friend, Sasmith. He saw Chang Yong strike you down. He followed you here, then told me about it. But I did not expect to find you free. I just got rid of the rope before you came in. Now, let's get out of here before Chen Yung comes back. Sasmith. 
So Chen Yong is one of the guerrilla leaders. It is so, Mr. Thurston. He controls the territory to the north of Sai Wing, my father's village. Pretty dangerous for him to visit Kuala Lumpur, unless the stakes were large enough. Eventual control of Malaya is quite a large stake, Mr. Thurston. And the cholera epidemic is made to order for those like Chen Yong. Yeah, that biological warfare gag is a pretty strong propaganda. The villagers swallowing it? My honorable father could prevent that as long as he was alive. But now... Yeah. Where have you been getting your medicines? Uh, we have been buying them from Mr. Stanley Thompson. Thompson? Uh, an importer of medical supplies. A wonderful friend of our people. Even if we have no money to purchase, we still receive the medicines. Good. Take me to Stanley Thompson. What are you going to do, Mr. Thurston? Deliver a supply of medicine to the hospital at Sai Wing. Uh, by yourself? Well, why not? But that will only give the guerrillas another opportunity to destroy a shipment. And to kill you, as they did my father. You know something, John? You may be right. <laughs> I must say, that is quite an order you've given us, Mr. Thurston. Quite an order. One would almost think it was for a hospital rather than an individual purchaser. It is for a hospital, Mr. Thompson, the one at Sai Wing. At Sai Wing? Oh, I surely you must be joking, sir. Why? There's a cholera epidemic, isn't there? Well, yes, of course, but the, the risks involved, the danger. At least wait until you see what uh, success Dr. Timbloff has. Dr. Tembloff? Oh, yes, the head of the hospital at Sai, but... Just a moment, Mr. Thurston. I'll get the doctor for you. Dr. Tembloff, would you mind uh, coming in here for a moment, please? What is it, Mr. Thompson? Oh, there's a gentleman here, a Mr. Thurston. He's also ordering supplies for the hospital. Ordering supplies? What right is he to order supplies for... May I ask what your interest is in our hospital, Mr. Thurston? Maybe I just don't like cholera epidemics, Dr. Tembloff. I understand you need those supplies pretty badly up there. Exactly. If you wish to help, cancel that order and allow me to see that the supplies get through. From what I hear, you haven't been too successful so far. You will not be either, Mr. Thurston, if one is to judge by the company you keep. What's that supposed to mean? I refer to John Nipa. What about him? He's an idealistic fool, as his father was before him. What would you have had them do? Turn their country over to the guerrillas? Why not? What difference does it make what kind of government rules the land? Communist, fascist, democratic. They're all the same. People die from disease under all of them. They can die in concentration camps, too. Only if they are fools and concern themselves with things that are none of their affair. Like freedom? Or medical supplies. Do not make a similar mistake, Mr. Thurston. One can also die from other things in Sai Wing, besides cholera. We'll return to the man called X in just a moment. Friends, unless we start preparing now, in a few years our public schools will be as behind the times as the Little Red Schoolhouse. Because of the huge increase in our birth rate during and after the last war, it's estimated that by 1956, there will be some 7 million more children in elementary schools than there are now. We must start preparing at once. More equipment will be needed, textbooks, playgrounds, and above all, more elementary school teachers. To help assure your child a proper education, join and work with local groups and school boards. And for free information about how people in other communities are improving their schools, write to this address. National Citizens Commission for the Public Schools, 2 West 45th Street, New York 19, New York. And now, Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. Using a cholera epidemic as the springboard for propaganda about biological warfare, guerrilla bands in the Malayan jungles have been seizing medical supplies intended for the disease-ridden villages of the interior. And now, Ken Thurston has arranged to take a shipment of medical supplies into the village of Sai Wing. Oh, 
Why don't we go back to Kuala Lumpur? After all, once you've seen one hunk of a jungle, you've seen it all. And once you've seen a man dying of cholera, Pagan, you never want to see it again. Yeah, but I don't want to see myself dying, neither, Mr. X. We can't get nothing if that Chang Yang knocks us off with boobies and traps and, and, and things. And I'll give you eight to five. He's waiting for us somewhere in this jungle right now. I'll let you in on a little secret, Pagan. That one bet I think you'll win. Ooh. Okay, pig on jump. The truck is a little damaged, Chenyon. The boxes of supplies barely touched. Ah, so, so. That is good. Go take them to our headquarters at Rafa. And the white men who ran into the jungle as we opened fire? I uh, have no concern, Batan. They will be available when we want them for the execution. <laughs> What a life. First I get all shot at. Now I'm stuck in the jungle a couple of million miles from nowhere. My Uncle Ahmed warned me there would be days like this with you. Oh, cheer up, Pagan. Not as bad as it seems. Oh, sure, sure not. <laughs> Suppose all of a sudden the jungle will come to an end. And somebody will come driving along the road to give us a uh, pick-me-up and... Uh, uh, yeah. Hey, we did find a road. That's right. And there's that lift you were talking about. Mr. X, it's the John Nipa and somebody coming this way in a couple of horses and buggy. Mr. Thurston, you are all right? The bandits, they don't arm you. Uh, no, uh, we are okay, John. We heard the shooting as we were en route, Mr. Thurston. Really, you had us quite worried. Well, thanks for the solicitude, Thompson. What are you doing out here? Well, naturally, I could hardly have helped learning of your plans. Your rendezvous here with the young Mr. Nipa. And inasmuch as I feel a rather, well, personal interest in the medical supplies, I persuaded him to allow me to come along. Plans, rendezvous. That's simple enough, Pagan. I asked John to take this plantation boat to Sai Wing with the medicines while we played decoy for Chen Yung. You, you mean there wasn't any medicine on, on, on board the truck we were driving? That's right. John's got them hidden away in his cart. Now we're going to take the supplies into the hospital at Sai Wing. And what of Mr. Thompson and me? Do you wish us to accompany you there also? No, you brought saddle horses along right back to Kuala Lumpur. Get in touch with the authorities. Tell them the guerrilla headquarters are in the village of Rasa. They'll know what to do. But Rasa? You seem a little startled, Thompson. Why? Well, no reason, actually, except that, well, if you are right, it might mean the end of a good deal of the trouble out here. Yes, Mr. Thompson. Thanks to Mr. Thurston, it would seem the end is at hand. <laughs> Wait for me here, Pig, huh? I go to the hospital and check. <laughs> what a joker. Where could I go in a dump like Sai Wing? May I ask what you are doing in Sai Wing, Mr. Thurston? I'm afraid I didn't take your advice very seriously back in Kuala Lumpur, Doctor. You mean you brought medical supplies? That's right. You fool. Well, that's hardly the reaction I expected. I am attempting to operate a hospital, Mr. Thurston. We are faced with a raging epidemic. It is my duty to my patients to obtain the drugs necessary to cure them wherever those drugs are obtainable. Yeah. So you make a deal with the gorillas. They give you the medicines you want, and in return, you let them take what they want. Your patients, the village of Sai Wing, all of Malaya. Why not? I have no enemies, but disease. Sure, lock yourself in your ivory tower. Refuse to admit what's going on in the world. But someday it's going to catch up with you. 
It would seem to have already caught up with you, Mr. Thurston. Well, Chen Young, so you decided to take over Sai Wing instead of returning to Rasa? Yes, Mr. Thurston. Nothing can prevent us from attaining our goal. As the failure of your infantile attempts to obtain military assistance should prove to you. What's that supposed to mean? Your friends, John Nipa and Stanley Thompson, have already been apprehended by my men. As soon as they arrive here, we shall see that certain long-delayed executions are no longer delayed. I cannot tell you how sorry I am, Mr. Thurston. I feel as though I've, I've let you down somehow. As though I... Oh. If you would remain still and quiet, Mr. Thompson. Mm. I could treat this leg of yours with less pain. Mm. She's right, Thompson. Take it easy. You've got nothing to reproach yourself uh, for. Yes, but I feel that I have, sir. I, I couldn't do much during the last war. Home guard, you know. I lost a son, the RAF. Oh. Just without here, but I thought I might help a bit. My medicines, delivering your message to the military and all. And... Oh, well, I guess I've just... Oh. Oh. I've just flubbed it. No, Thompson. You haven't flubbed anything. Sure, that's right, Mr. Thompson. So maybe me and Mr. Thurston are all tied up here in the plink. That Chang Young can't do anything to us, but... But shoot us. Uh, that's all I can do now, Mr. Thompson... There is a bare possibility that I can save your leg. But it will require a good deal of treatment. And you'll have to... I regret the interruption, Doctor. But it's time for one of the prisoners to stand trial on charges of treason. Not wasting any time, are you, Chen Yong? Oh, do not be alarmed, Mr. Thurston. It is Mr. Thompson we are after now. Thompson? There's nothing too low for your kind, is there? But that is impossible. The man is sick. He is in no condition to stand trial now. Unfortunately, my dear Doctor, we have already convened the... Uh, court. Our time is too valuable to waste. Take him along. Stop. I forbid it. This man is a patient of mine. I will not allow you to remove him from here in his present condition. I give the orders, doctor. Please, uh, I don't mind, doctor. Let them do what they want. There's nothing to fear, really. Not as long as you can stand up and face the enemy. Recognize him for what he is. <laughs> Well, that sounds a bit mixed up and foolish, I guess, but... Well, goodbye, Mr. Thurston. Mr. Selsmith. Doctor. Goodbye, Mr. Thompson. Take him away. They took him. My patient. They promised. They would not interfere with my hospital. But, but they... They took him. They... Who, oh, Mr. Thurston? What price ivory towers now, Doctor? This... I cannot make amends, Mr. Thurston. But perhaps in some small way, it may help. If you will hold out your hands, I will cut the ropes. Jeep the doctor told us about. So what? There's a guard alongside. We can't get to it. Nothing like trying. Come on. <laughs> ah! All right, let's get aboard. Boy, 
Why, some classy stuff, eh, Mr. Hex? Nothing like riding back to Kuala Lumpur in comfort, I always say. We haven't reached Kuala yet. Oh, sure, sure. But from now on, there is nothing but easy sailing. You have been farming on Mr. Toto. This is the end of the road. You seem pretty sure about that, John. John? This machine gun fast. I have a right to be. Mr. Rex, it's John Nipa. But why is he standing in those bushes pointing the gun at us? Because he's one of Chen Yong's finest assistants. And dirtiest spies. Assistants? Spies? But, but, but... I would prefer putting it another way, Mr. Thurston. And let us say that I am a loyal, patriotic citizen of the People's Republic of Malaya. There we go again. But don't make no sense, Mr. Rex. He was helping us and his father, Padang Niba. What's a little thing like murdering a father, Pagan? Well, it might be of benefit to the state. My father was a traitor to his people. Oh, sure. He sold them out by devoting his life to their welfare. Betrayed them by trying to bring them food, medicine, peace. You owe me nothing. We do not need a sentimental theory. All there is reality. Yes. Like that gun you're holding. All those planes flying overhead. Planes? That's right, John. British planes. Contacted by this jeep's radio. They're carrying twin cargoes to Sai Wing. Soldiers to take care of Chen Yong and his men. And medicines for the cholera. If you want realities, John, take a good look at them. All right, Mr. Thurston. I have looked at them. Now it is your turn to face reality. That's my gun. Chad, he's going to shoot. He's going to shoot. Keep your head down, Pagan. Oh, no! Oh, no! I'm dead. I'm dead. I, I... Hey, hey, what happened to John Nipa? Let's take a look. <laughs> Mr. X. No, no. It's unconscious. He'll live to face trial and koala. Oh. Well. Well, I guess that winds things up, hey, Mr. X? It doesn't wind anything up, Pagan. Why not? We took care of him and Cheng Young. There'll be no more cholera inside wing. Not the cholera I'm talking about. Another disease. The disease that infected John Nipa, Chen Yong, a lot of others. We've got to find a cure for it, Pagan. Before it destroys the world... Now, here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And my thanks to Gene Tatum, Will Wright, Howard McNair, Robert Boone, and Tony Barrett. Next week, the Desert of Death in Afghanistan, where Ken Thurston runs into one of the most vicious characters he's ever known. Quite apart, that is, from Leon Belasco, who'll be along as Pagon Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music by Milton Charles. The story is written by Sidney Marshall. This program is directed by Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. And now, until next week, same time and station, this is Hal Gibney saying good night for The Man Called X. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>